Hey church, this month's book recommendation is a book by J. Gresham Machen called Christianity and Liberalism. Now a little bit of background to this book. Machen is writing in response to this movement called theological liberalism, the, the theological liberalism that's coming through on the turn of the 20th century into the early 1900s. And if you don't know anything about theological liberalism, the basic idea of it is they want to take Christianity and hold on to what they believe are really the core elements of Christianity, but with everything else, they want to sort of modernize it. They want to bring it up to the times. And really, they see this as a strategy for making Christianity compelling within a modern society. And so theological liberalism tends to be rather anti-supernatural and anti-miracle, very skeptical of miracles. So you would have found folks within theological liberalism wanting to hold on, for example, to the core teachings of Jesus, saying that Christianity's central sort of kernel that, that needs to be held on to is really the moral teachings of Jesus and what Jesus taught and how we are to live. But in terms of things like the resurrection, did Jesus actually bodily raise from the dead? Is Jesus actually going to physically return to earth? Was Jesus uh, really God in flesh? Was he born of a virgin? Those sort of questions, uh, depending on kind of where you landed on the spectrum, um, those sort of questions were up in the air though. And again, this was seen as a strategy for saying, you know, these elements of Christianity are just not very believable among a lot of modern people. They're not very acceptable. So if we sort of adapt our Christianity and, and modernize our Christianity, people will actually find Christianity more acceptable still into the modern era. And it doesn't take a whole lot of imagination to see the relevance of that same sort of circumstance existing even today, where we have many people who claim Christianity, but they want to sort of update Christianity. They want to sort of, you know, tweak some of the doctrines, tweak some of the ethics to fit uh, ways that are they see as more compatible with culture. Because there are still things about Christianity that just, they don't jive with modern sensibilities. And so what if we just tweak some of those things and make Christianity more uh, palatable to the modern person? Wouldn't that make Christianity more compelling to them and actually help Christianity's mission? I think specifically about matters of sexual ethics, for example. Well, J. Gresham Machen is going to argue in this book, 1923, uh, this book, Christianity and Liberalism, he's going to argue that that is a fool's errand. Because in doing that, theological liberalism, this kind of so-called uh, liberal Christianity, ends up being no Christianity at all. So his title is purposeful. When he says Christianity and liberalism, you'll notice the and separates Christianity from theological liberalism. You see, the theological liberals, they would have wanted to claim that their, their liberalism, their approach, was just a, a, a new form of Christianity, but still Christianity itself, a, another variety, an alternative expression of the faith. And J. Gresham Machen says, listen, there are certain things about Christianity that are non-negotiable, and they're going to be incompatible with modern sensibilities. You see, the thing is, there are going to be things about Christianity in any culture, in any society, at any era, that are not going to jive with that culture. Christianity always comes into a culture and confronts it. Christianity did this in the first century, where Christians came in and said, we worship one God. And those who worship the Roman pantheon, of course, saw that as a rejection of the gods. And so Christians were accused of atheism or devout Jews. They found the cross to be offensive that a Messiah would actually be cursed by God on a cross. So it's nothing new that Christianity is offensive to culture in many of its convictions and the things that we proclaim. This is actually fundamental to what Christianity is. And so our instinct shouldn't be to sort of hide and clean up those edges of Christianity. That's what makes Christianity Christianity. And so even as we look at the table of contents, Machen is going to address the doctrine of God, the doctrine of man, the doctrine of, of Christ, the doctrine of salvation, the doctrine of the church. And these are all things that he sees theological liberalism essentially distorting, where, where you can only bend these definitions so much before they actually break and they're no longer Christianity. And so he wants to say this, this theological liberalism is not Christianity anymore. Even though it claims to be a new variety of Christianity, it would claim to be a Christian liberalism. 
Uh, that's an oxymoron, he's going to argue. They have abandoned fundamental things to the actual, to what it means to be a Christian, what it means to believe what Christians believe. In abandoning core Christian beliefs, core Christian doctrines, they have actually turned their faith into something that is no longer recognizable as Christianity, historically and biblically speaking. And it's interesting. Uh, Machen lived this out in his own life. So Machen taught at Princeton, and Princeton was once this place uh, known for core reform teaching with people like Charles Hodge and Benjamin B. Warfield. Uh, there was a whole school uh, of, of reformed theology, robust teaching there. But during his time, Machen felt and concluded that the school had gone adrift into such liberalism. And so he actually led the charge in starting the institution that is today Westminster Theological Seminary. Machen is one of my favorite authors. This is a fantastic little book. It's only a little bit less than 200 pages, about 180 pages. And so I encourage you to pick it up. I, even though this was written in 1923, it is still as relevant as ever today because we're still dealing with these sort of instincts that Machen is addressing. And as always, if you decide to pick up a copy and give it a read, I'd love to grab coffee with you and see what you think of it.